Hello, hello. Happy Friday. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. Michelle here with Michelle Beckner Family Wellness. I'm here with Happy Mama, Healthy Baby episode. I like just wrote it. I think it's 28, right? <laughs> so welcome. Um, if you haven't joined us before, uh, the way it works is every Tuesday, my... Um, Sorry, I just got a notification on my phone. <laughs> Every Tuesday I'm here um, after bedtime around like 8 o'clock or so talking about healthy mama stuff. And then uh, Friday afternoons around lunchtime I'm here talking about healthy baby stuff. Um, so if you missed last Tuesday, a couple days ago, um, <clears throat> I was talking about creating new habits. A couple new habits that I have been trying to create in my life and... Uh, some things that I found that were working or things that were making it hard for me. My phone is very precariously placed on like an old cooler <laughs> on the table out in our porch and I'm really scared it's gonna fall so <laughs> be prepared if that happens. Um, so yeah so and if you are a subscriber to my email list then you got an email this morning I wrote um, talking a little bit about my new habits and um, some things that I'm thankful for, um, some moments of joy that I found in the past few weeks, um, and kind of just reflecting on uh, fall, even though we do still have three weeks of summer left, it's really feeling like fall where we are. It's beautiful. Um, I like it when it's like, I mean, I like hot weather. I, I really like hot weather, but um, I love it when it's like, in the sun, it's really warm, and you can like feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. But then you go in the shade, and it gets like a little bit chilly. That is like such good weather. So anyway, um, we talked a little bit about that in my email today, and how Bradley slept through the night last night. He hasn't done that in a, in a while. Um, we've we've all been kind of sick. I've had a little cold, and Bradley's had a little cold. So I'm hoping that's all it is. Um, I also had eggs over the weekend to trial it out, so maybe that's why he hasn't been sleeping well either. But either way, he was doing good, um, and that was one of the new habits that I was trying to create was waking up early before the kids and getting some work done before the kids get up. So I was actually able to do it again today after about, like I did it for a week, and then I got sick, and then Bradley hadn't been sleeping well. So I was finally able to get up this morning and get some work done, and that's why I was able to... Um, feel inspired to and decided to send an email out to everybody on my list. And if you aren't on my list, probably the easiest way to do it is um, from my Facebook page, there's a blue button under my cover photo. I think it says sign up, something like that. Um, so you can put your email in there and join my mailing list. I send a newsletter out once a month. I'm thinking I want to do it maybe twice a month. We'll see. Um, and then I send out other cool stuff too. Um, so, okay, before I get into it, I haven't even told you guys what the topic for today is going to be. Um, so today's topic is um, I cut dairy, and now what? So kind of like the quick um, what to expect um, when you first find out that your baby might have a dairy allergy and um, kind of what to do from there. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Going back to my mailing list, another way to get on my mailing list is to download today. I put a link to... Um, just a little guide I put together. It's a very lengthy title, but it's very good information, I promise. Um, seven things you must know before seeing your pediatrician about your baby's potential food allergy. So um, download that. You'll put in your email, and I'll email it to you. And then from there, um, you can uh, start getting some of my awesome newsletters. So uh, we'll just jump right into it. It's Friday afternoon, so hopefully you're joining me over lunch, or if you're watching the replay, then I'll try to... Oh, I told you what happened. My phone just vibrated, and that's what made it fall. fall. It's my husband's fault, because he just sent me a message. Anyway, the lighting was bad, so we'll just sit like this, and um, I'll hold my phone. I ordered from Amazon, like, a little tripod for my phone, so I'll have that, hopefully, for my next live show, so that'll be exciting. Um... Okay, so I woke up early, but apparently my brain's still not working, um, so maybe I need to take a nap or meditate this afternoon, which I probably will. Okay, so today we're talking about, um, you're just told to cut dairy, and now what? Look, everywhere in my room, or in my house, no matter what room I'm in, there's kids' stuff. We've got our little basketball net here, little kids' t 
table. It's just like everywhere in our house. Um, okay, so cutting dairy. <clears throat> I feel like I was going to say other stuff before my phone fell. Whatever. Um, so one important thing to know is it can take, and it most likely will take about um, two to three weeks for, well, it'll take a long time for dairy to get out of your system and your baby system. So it can take about two to three weeks to get out of your system, like out of your body, out of your milk, and then another two to three weeks to get out of baby's system. So that is four to six weeks total. Um, so that's one thing that a lot of moms don't realize, like they cut dairy and they're hoping to see improvement right away, and then they're still seeing um, like bad poops or a miserable baby or their eczema is not clearing up and that like skin things can take much longer to clear up obviously because the skin has to heal and same with the gut too like if you are seeing mucusy and bloody stools like the gut's going to take some time to heal but anyway it can take weeks before you start seeing improvement so you really really got to stick with it um not to say that you might not start seeing improvement right away um you know with genevieve I don't even really remember with Bradley, but with Genevieve, I literally saw improvement in like a day or two. It was amazing. Um, and so I have heard some moms that have seen improvement right away, um, but the majority of moms that um, I've talked to about this, it takes really a couple weeks um, and up to six weeks to see improvement. So stick with it. Um, and yeah and it can get better before it gets worse so kind of like what I was saying you have to give their skin or their gut or whatever um, wherever the allergy is causing the biggest um, reaction the big, most inflammation it's got you got to give it some time to heal so it's actually like really pretty common and I don't know exactly why I haven't done the research I don't know if there is research out there on it or not but um, it is common to like see some flare-ups, I guess you could call it, like see some things get a little bit worse before they get better. Um, it's not the case with everybody, but if it is, if it does happen to you, if you do notice things getting worse before they get better, um, that, that could be why. It also could be, um, you know, maybe you had a slip up that you're aware of or you're not aware of, or there was, you went out to eat, um, and you know you never know right you can never be positive what they give you when you're at a restaurant or um, there could be something that you're eating like vitamins or probiotics or something that actually have dairy or other allergen in them that you're not aware of so that could be the case um, so if so yeah that's kind of tough but if they're okay so I guess what I want to go Sorry, I'm looking at my notes trying to figure out the best way to um, do this all so it makes sense. So we're talking about how it could take up to six weeks, right, to clear everything up. It could get better before it gets worse. Um, so I guess the next important thing to mention is the importance of uh, making sure y you are 100% eliminating that allergen. And I'm talking specifically about dairy here. Um, but it could really be anything. Usually dairy is the one to start with, and I'm, I'm actually going to talk about that in a minute. But, um, man, I'm having a hard time with my brain. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> I probably do, I do this, like, every episode. I'm just, like, my brain doesn't work. Mom brain. Um, so the importance of completely eliminating dairy or whatever allergen you're cutting out of your diet um, because your baby's gut needs time to heal or wherever the inflammation is needs time to get um, uninflamed yeah um, so it's really really important that you're like a hundred percent eliminating um, so be really careful about um, hidden dairy in places be really careful about reading labels for anything I'm actually compiling a list of like the most surprising places that people have found dairy um, so yeah look everywhere I'm um, going out to eat it can be scary like the first few times um, so but I don't want to say don't do it because I mean it can be very enjoyable if you don't feel like cooking or if it's a beautiful day out like today and you just want to sit up <coughs> excuse me sit outside and have some happy hour right um, so yeah going out to eat you got to be really careful with um, if and we can talk about that in another episode more specifics on what to do when you go out to eat but um, 
what we're really talking about is being super careful that you're not getting any dairy. If there is a flare up, again, I said it could be just, that just happens sometimes, but it also could be of something you ate unknowingly. Um, so if that's the case, or if, if you, so if, you, if there, if your baby has a flare up, I'm calling it, um, and you're like, you know what, we went out to eat the other night, or, you know, maybe that had dairy in it or whatever. If there's anything that you question, start that six weeks over, the four to six weeks over, um, in, in your mind. Like, uh, yeah, you want to make sure you're completely dairy free for four to six weeks before you consider, um, <clears throat> making another move. So with that being said, um, every pediatrician recommends something different and every allergist and everybody recommends something different. <coughs> so number one, follow your intuition. Seriously, more often than not, moms know what's best for their babies. <coughs> and I'm sure being a mom, you totally understand and agree with that. Um, so I've talked to moms who'd be like, well, the doctor is saying to do this, but I really feel like it's this. Um, like for me, uh, with Genevieve, she was my first, like, so the first time I ever went through this, the doctor told me to cut out basically all the top allergens, dairy, soy, nuts. Actually, I think that was it. I don't remember if she said eggs or not too. Um, so I did. And, um, and then I had a slip up. I ate a croissant, <laughs> which is loaded with butter. Um, and she like, uh, had a major reaction to it right, pretty much right away. So, and then I just kind of followed my intuition. I was like, okay, so we obviously know that it's dairy. Uh, I really don't feel like it's any of these other things. So I reintroduced them into my diet. So I kind of followed my intuition there. Um, so yeah, anyway, you'll hear different recommendations from different doctors, different moms who've been through it and even moms or in-laws or whoever who haven't been through it. So don't listen to them if you don't want to. <laughs> um, so number one, follow your intuition. Most likely whatever you feel is right. Um, is it will work for your baby. <coughs> but, um, what I really think, unless you have reason to believe it's something else, otherwise, I really think cutting dairy is the number one and just start with that like be gentle on yourself take it slow start by just cutting dairy and do those four to six weeks um, you know if there is any kind of questionable thing that happens where some symptoms flare up again restart those four to six weeks once you know for sure you've got a full four to six weeks <coughs> completely completely dairy free and you're still seeing symptoms whether they're just as bad as they were before or, um, or they're a little bit better, but your baby's still a little bit off. Like, even if it's just like they're not sleeping well at night or, you know, even just something little, um, then that's when you want to start thinking about cutting more things. Um, so I'd say just start with one, just start with dairy and then start thinking about cutting more things. And again, you'll hear different opinions on what's best to start next. Soy. <clears throat> Um, is very common um, if your baby has issues with dairy because the, the protein, which is what they um, your, their body has trouble with, um, the proteins in soy and dairy are very similar. So soy is a very common one to cut that if dairy doesn't clear up all the symptoms. <clears throat> Other top allergens are um, eggs, nuts, peanuts, um, there's the top eight, but those in babies, oh, and wheat, like those are in babies from what I've seen the most common ones. So what I would suggest is if you're still seeing some symptoms after cutting dairy for a full, um, four to six weeks, maybe cut soy. Um, but in those four to six weeks where you've cut dairy, pay attention, like you're reading labels now, right? <laughs> so look at the labels and pay attention to some of those other allergens, pay attention to, um, what things have soy in them and pay attention to like how many eggs you're eating or whatever you're eating a lot of just start making a mental note or like if you've got the energy to do it then food journaling is awesome too uh, but it's hard especially when you're breastfeeding I've tried it breastfeeding before and it's literally like you just I just eat so much <coughs> sorry um, I just eat so much that the journal gets a little bit absurd so in those four to six weeks start paying attention to the other allergens like soy and nuts and um, eggs, things like that, that you're eating a lot of. Like maybe you replace dairy with a lot of soy products 
or replace dairy with like things like almond milk and all different almond substitutes. So now you're eating way more almonds. So <clears throat> pay attention to those so that you know like what the next thing might be. So you come up with a game plan for the next for the next step. So you don't make it to six weeks and then you're still having issues and then you're like, okay, now what? And you're kind of starting all over. So now you can make it to those six weeks and you, um, hopefully that's it. Like hopefully dairy, cutting out dairy clears everything up and you're good to go for the next six to nine months at least. Um, but if not, then at least like you, you're already ready for your next step, right? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and then you're not totally overwhelmed again. Um, the only other tip as far as like those first four to six weeks is make sure you have support. <clears throat> There's tons. I'm like dying here. I'm really sorry. You have to listen to me cough. I should have brought some water out here. Um, find support. There's tons of good uh, dairy-free Facebook groups, which I am a member of a lot of them. Uh, friends, family, moms who've been a bit before. Um, hopefully your husband and your family members are supportive. If not, then it's even more important to find support somewhere else. It's really, really important to have people supporting you who've been through it before because it's totally, totally doable. And not only doable, but um, you can seriously, it can change your life for the better. Like me included, I know so many moms who are like so happy um, after eliminating dairy. Uh, it can really, really improve your health and quality of life. So um, support is important so you can keep uh, keep going at it. So the next thing I, so I mentioned that, um, then you're good to go <laughs> to like keep eliminating dairy and whatever for at least six to nine months. So I think probably next week I'll talk. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just looking at my notes. I'll talk about, um, why it's important to wait at least six to nine months before reintroducing and then kind of some ways to start reintroducing. Uh, dairy into your diet and your baby's diet. So that's all I've got for you today. I'm going to go get some water so that I don't die. Um, and I hope everybody enjoys their Labor Day weekend. I think we're supposed to get some rain up here. I don't know if it's remnants of Harvey or what, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> I won't complain about a little bit of rain from Harvey because it's way better than um, millions and millions of people um, what they had to deal with down in Texas and the Gulf Coast. So thoughts and prayers go out to anybody who's down there, anybody who knows anybody down there. Um, so yeah, enjoy your Friday, enjoy your Labor Day weekend. I'm going to be eating, if you saw my live video yesterday, I'm going to be eating some hot dogs and some dairy-free ice cream, but also plenty and plenty of delicious fresh produce and yummy food. So I will be back here, I guess Tuesday. I'll be back here for my live show on Tuesday talking about happy mama stuff. So, thanks for joining and see you guys later. Bye.